Hello again, FSC Fest Jack Speed and Custom Shop. Well, we have a, another small problem. We have damaged a prop. Last night we were out with my boat and we took a friend of ours out on the river up in Shyocton to basically show her how to operate a boat. She bought a 1963 Starcraft with a little Evan root on it. The old school and it works. The guy she bought it off of didn't supply the boat with any extra safety equipment like your life vest, your boat paddles and flares, whatever else you're supposed to have that my boat came with when I got it from my father. Long story short, she wanted me to take her for a ride out on a river or somewhere so that we can get her acquainted to boating. So we took her out on mine. It was kind of late in the day and we didn't want to try to take a ride all the way out to Appleton. So we said, you know what, we'll stay local. So about 15 minutes from here is the town of Shyocton. Now I go shooting up there a lot and I know that there was a river through there where I see a lot of boats in it. So my thought process was it's close. We could do a quick boat ride up and down the river. Let's just go do something. It's late in the day. Oh, well, it's close by. Let's just go. So we decided, you know what, let's ride. So the weather wasn't going to be all that great, and it turned out to be scattered thunderstorms. And to be honest, maybe it's my mentality being a bad mentality, but if I had to wait to do things for good weather days, that means it's not going to happen. So as long as it's not going to be really bad weather and a lot of it, I'll usually go. I've got the bimini top for that reason. So if we have to wait it out a storm or two, it's just not a big deal. You lose time. But again, it's not a big deal. Boats get wet. These things happen. So we put it in the river, and it was a fun river ride. Problem with that river is, I guess within the last year, up here in Wisconsin, we've had some pretty major storms. And there's a lot of trees that fell into the river over the course of that storm. Some were removed because there's a lot of houseboat traffic up there. There's a lot of smaller fishing boat with tiller style uh, outboards on there. A lot of boat traffic on this on this river. It isn't deep by any means. I mean, literally, my transducer is eight inches below the waterline, and it's reading two, three, four feet. And in the curves, I've seen it as much as 30 feet where the water churns and digs up the ground and obviously deposits it upstream into the, or downstream, I should say, up in a where it's shallow. So anyway, we, we only draft a foot and a half. I mean, the water line, water line's about here. What is that, a foot and a half, two feet? So it's not a problem. Plus, I'm running the boat, obviously not this high up, but I'm obviously running it with the engine up a good amount. I'm not worried about the sand. But I found a completely submerged tree. Completely. So if you see a tree in the water from the shore, you know to steer away from it. And the thicker part of the tree is up into the up at the shore where it uprooted. But what you don't see is the ones that are completely submerged. This one had no warning at all. I'll post a screenshot of the river in a location for anybody else that happens to watch this channel that runs that river. We were in the middle of the river right where there's a no-wake buoy. And we cut close to the buoy because it was in the middle of the river. Safest spot's in the middle, you would think, right? As long as you don't have one side real shallow and the other side come down real deep to make the river, then you stay to the deep side. But they were both about the same. So we were in the middle. And we're just creeping along literally at idle speed. All of a sudden, the engine starts going bump, bump, bump. And you watch the engine rock. I just put it right to neutral. And uh, sure enough, the damage was done. But... No major damage, but a little bit of damage. So that's what this video is going to be about. The really easy fix to a not big problem, but nonetheless a problem. Let's get into it. And there it is. We have the original three-blade prop that came with this boat back when my dad got it in 2005. Just a regular three-blade prop. Nothing fancy. But it's got some hours on it. As you can see, this was me prior. It had some seaweed caught in it. And from running up and down the lakes, like Lake Poygan and so on, from 
the last video with the houseboat on it, the man overboard video, that section of the lake is very shallow. And I do believe I put it into the, some sand. Now, bear in mind, this lower unit was reconditioned, and that is not original paint. So, a lot of that was done prior to me getting the boat. But now, it's a little worse, I think. Either way, she's been through a little bit of sand. But up here in the shallow sandy water, that's kind of commonplace. Either way, that prop had seen better days. And after I hit that submerged tree, you see this blade here, it's got pieces missing. And it's slightly bent over. I don't know if you can see. You can see how she's bent in a little bit. And then this one, of course, is just piece completely ripped off but if you remember right from back in the day when my father got the boat brand new a car crashed into this and the prop may have just been reconditioned I don't know but this is the only prop that's ever ran on it but here's the important information you need to know right there This P17 right here, this is a 17 inch prop. 70, this is a 17 inch pitch prop. And this is just a part number for Mercury. And it is an original Mercury prop. We also have this here. In this hold, we keep what my father would refer to as a ski prop. This prop is brand new, it's never been used. But there's your answer. It's a 13.75 diameter prop, 15 inch pitch. I'll have to explain that here shortly. But this we always kept on board as a spare. Should you ever completely lose one or wipe all three blades off. We brought it home with this. We didn't go very far. Obviously out of balance. It shook a little bit, but nothing major. There was no need to jump in the water and change it out. Now according to Mercury, these tabs here... Some of them, they want these bent in. So there's one, two, three tabs that are bent in to this lock nut to keep it from turning. So all I have to do now is get a screwdriver, which I did not get yet, and go bend them tabs out slightly. That just keeps, that just keeps this nut from backing off by accident. Now we just gently bend these tabs out. What the Mercury book says is take a board and wedge it in there. I just could do like so. That nut is like a big nylox nut. So it won't accidentally vibrate off. That bolt only gets torqued down to 55 foot-pounds, so it's really not that heavy-duty of a torque. If you look down in there, you see it's apparently brass. Hub kit. The hub is pressed inside that prop. That's that rubberized stuff. Okay, so this is the prop that we're not going to use. This is what my father would refer to as a ski prop. This is a 15-inch pitch propeller. Nope, the hub kit is not installed. There's no rubber in the prop. It is only just a piece of aluminum. This is the propeller I just pulled off. She's a 17-inch pitch prop. This is what just came off the boat, obviously the one I damaged. A couple of issues here. One, this is the old hub kit. It came out. Now that rubber, I guess, would press out of the prop if I tried. I might try later. If I do, I'm going to destroy this hub kit so it would be useless. So I might just leave it in. Eventually, this prop is probably going to be reconditioned. So when my father bought this boat brand new, he came with this prop and a hub kit, and he bought this prop as a spare. 
My father's no dummy. He also bought a hub kit. This is a 2005 bottle of your boat. That's as old as this stuff is. And as you can see by the box, it's been riding around a while. So what we're trying to determine now is, do we need a new one? Is this one shot? I've never had this box apart, never had a need to. This is a thrust bearing. This is still what's on the lower unit of the boat. What this does is this rides in here and the propeller pushes on this and it wears this little piece out rather than the lower unit. Think about it, the propeller's pushing, right? It's gotta push on something. So it pushes on this thrust bearing. The new tab to lock the brass nylocks nut. And of course, a new hub. Wait, the purpose of this video isn't so much to show off a hub kit that's about 13 years old and has been unused. Let me try to explain to you prop pitch and what that means. The idea is this. As a propeller turns in a water, it acts like a screw. Hence, they're commonly called screws. So you spin a propeller real fast in the water, obviously there's a lot of slippage going on. Water moves, whereas another solid object don't. So how do you tell what a prop pitch is and how do you make it make any sense to you? Okay, now I'll explain it to you exactly as my father explained it to me. It makes more sense this way. An article I read online refers to it as some, something like, think of a wood screw. My father referred to it as, let's pretend that this propeller is sitting in a bucket or a pool of clay. That clay ain't moving, not like water does. So as the propeller turns one full revolution, how far did it turn if it's in a media that will not be moved away by the propeller? So let's start here. If it went from here, this blade to the top, turn it one full revolution, how far did it go? This is a 15 inch pitch prop. It would have moved forward 15 inches. Now similar to automotive stuff, if you go at let's say a 20, 21, 25, I mean the sky's the limit with these things. The further it goes per revolution, in the end the faster top speed you have. So now the boat, instead of going 30, she's going 40 if you really increase the prop's pitch. However, if you don't have the power to push it, you're not going to go as fast. Consequently, why my father referred to this as a, as a ski prop, because with water skiing, you got to pull the skier out of the water quickly, get the boat out of the hole, so to speak. You want to get it up and on plane faster. You lose your top speed, but think of a dragster. Dragster's got to go from point A to point B a quarter mile away in quickness. He's not worried about top speed. He's just trying to get from the quarter mile as fast as possible. He's trying to launch the car fast. He isn't trying to go for top speed. So that's what you're doing here. It's like starting a, this is like starting a 10 speed bike in third gear and a bigger pitch probably be starting like this one be starting in like sixth gear. You get a higher top speed for pedaling but you also lose your quickness to get out of the hole, to get moving. If you start off slow speed and you never change gears, because obviously you can't change this midstream like you do a transmission, it's like starting off in first gear and staying in first gear. You're revving the crap out of your engine, but you're not going anywhere fast. That's the idea. In the end, you also have to consider your RPM range of engines. That particular engine from Mercury says the wide open throttle should be running between, between 5,000 and 6,000 RPM. That's where they wanted it, wide open throttle. And we're not a big family. It's just me, Jen, and my son, Matthew. Me being the heaviest, Matthew, then Jen. So since I don't have a beast of a, of a girlfriend, we run pretty light. The boat is also a very light boat. The boat's a Luma craft. It's made out of aluminum, obviously. And she's very light. We don't run a lot of gear when we're, when we're out on the lakes. Predominantly, we're just playing around, just zipping around, going fast, and having a good time. So, we're light. So, this prop would still allow the engine to over-rev. I shouldn't use the word over-rev. I should say, you know, it'll go faster than 6,000 based on the stock tachometer in the helm, however. That's another question. Does Mercury have, on this engine, being an O4, does it have a rev limiter? I've been told yes, I've been told no. That engine is the last of the carbureted ones. 
So I don't know how fancy that ignition system is. And I'm not about to go find out. But according to the stock tack on the helm, it'll go faster than 6,500 RPM, at which point that's too fast, and I just pull the throttle back. I like to cruise around 4,500 RPM, maybe 5,000 for, for a long stretch. But at 4,500, it's only running about 20 mile an hour, which is pretty fast. But for, for a flat lake, eh, we could do better. So this is a 17-inch pitch prop. I've decided we're going to go with a 19-inch pitch four-blade prop. Now we're getting ready to go and get it. And we're going to answer some questions about the hub kit, whether we should use this one, try to go with a, another one with a longer snout. Let's go find out. So we were on our way to the prop shop, and on our way we saw this big-ass Donzi. The local business here in Kakana. I don't know whose boat this is. I just wanted to show my son what a big set of props look like. The other thing I wanted to show my son is twins run opposite direction propellers. That way you don't have the prop walk. One will spin the, the port one or left one to go forward spins clockwise. The starboard side to go forward spins counterclockwise. That way it eliminates prop walk. I don't know what size drives these are, but he's got four, four, four blade stainless on it, and it looks pretty badass. Plus, you can tell on the bottom he's got the transducer way down at the at the very bottom of the boat for his depth finder. So, if you could figure where his water line is, which is probably about the top of his drives, he's got to add footage to it. Either way, I just saw this. I figured, let's see what else they're doing. Just like another YouTuber I'm a fan of, DDE, we are daily driven. Oh yeah, thanks Matt. We're just much older daily driven. And I threw my little tribute up to the Bubba the Love Sponge show. If anybody doesn't understand, that's where the term cricket caper came from. It's up to you to figure out what that actually means. It doesn't apply to me anymore, but it did at one point. It's still funny. We'll return at quarter to two. What time is it, Matt? Yeah, let me check. Well, it's 1.30 now, so I guess we'll just wait. I guess this is important if you ever stop by. Oh, check that out. Just leave your prop here. Take a claim ticket, and uh, they'll call you. 15 minutes, we'll just sit here and chill in the car. Okay, so we just got back from the prop shop, and uh, what we turned out, finding out is, this one already has been reconditioned before. It probably could be reconditioned again for about the cost of a new one. So this one is gonna wind up on the wall of shame, which I'll probably just hang it on the wall as a busted prop. This one will remain unused and as a boat spare. This will be used as a ski prop also should one of my sons or anybody else decide to do water skiing. Again, quick up and out of the hole. 15 inch pitch prop on this one. So, back from the prop shop, we wound up getting a new propeller. One thing I'm gonna note, notate first real quick, I got this from the prop shop. When we took the prop off earlier in the video, after we got done filming, I looked in the toolbox and I came to a realization that somehow, some way, the large crescent wrench that used to sit in that toolbox isn't in the toolbox. So if I had wiped all three blades off of that puppy, there was no change in props on the water. Having that prop and a, and a hub kit wouldn't have done me any good. What am I going to do, take it off with my teeth? 
So with that being said, that's a mistake that I won't make again. Hence, I bought a new wrench. Now, this wrench is just a hand deal, and it has a, a little piece on the back, a square, so also you could take out a drain plug if you need with this tool. That also might fit a torque wrench, because you're supposed to torque this down to 55 inch, uh, 50, sorry, 55 foot-pounds. So that might fit a torque wrench. Either way, I have the right socket on my torque wrench, so that's not really a problem. So this tool is going to stay on the boat. Just don't have to worry about a crescent wrench because boats get wet, rusting, and not being able to be used or being real stiff. So this will be kept on the boat. I'll be honest with you, you try to prepare for all contingencies and all breakdowns and all sorts of problems. There is certain equipment that you're required by law to have on the boat. Consult your local laws as to what you are required to have on board with you. But the ability to work on your boat, if you're mechanically inclined, wouldn't be a good idea. And uh, to be honest, this prop caught me with my pants down because I had no ability to change it. My father used to think, okay, leave the trolling motor on the boat all the time. You could always troll the motor back. Let me tell you, that had been a long distance ride upstream fighting the current in addition. I don't think that trolling motor would have even came close to making it. But in my defense, we also are in water where it's, the river is only 50 feet, 100 feet wide. So eventually, you'd wind up on shore. No one would be in any danger. Just to walk through the woods, get to a road, catch an Uber back to the truck, and go home and come back with the parts later. Just tie your boat to the tree, and it'll be there. Or not. But at least that way nobody is in... Even if someone were to steal the boat. First of all, how are you going to steal the damn boat? The reason I couldn't get it home was because there's no prop on it. So how are they going to get it home? They have to tow it. That'll look weird. Either way, the ultimate thing is people and property. First is people, then property. As long as everybody on board the boat is safe, it's just property. It's just a busted prop. So our ability to fix it on the water, in certain situations, yeah, you might want to. Because let's be frank, Lake Winnebago is a lot bigger than the Wolf River. So anyway, came back from the prop shop with a new prop. This is made by Quicksilver. They call this the Nemesis series. Show you what we bought. So this is a four blade prop, 19 inch pitch. The only thing I don't like about it is unlike the direct mercury props, the part number is right there on the side, right in here, but it doesn't tell you what the pitch is. It is, however, right on the inside. It's a 12.5 by 19P. So she's a 12.5 diameter. 19 inch pitch. The reason for the four blade as opposed to the three blade, as I'm told, is the four blade will help it get out of the hole quicker. So with losing the out of the hole performance of a smaller pitch prop, we will gain it, or at least most of it back, by going with a four blade prop. Being it's a 19 inch pitch now, it'll pick up, um, it'll pick up more top speed. So it should be equal performance or just a little bit less performance out of the water than this old one. And a higher top speed, lower RPM at speed, which is really what I'm looking for. Another thing Tony over at the prop shop told me is that over time, because these props are made out of aluminum, not stainless, they tend to start losing their cup. They tend to start getting basically flattened, for lack of a better term, over time. Plus, in the end, like this here, I'm pretty sure I put it in the sand once. So, either that or the seaweed rubbed it off. Either way, props lose their performance over time. The boat is 13 years old. Not a lot of hours, but some. And it's been banged into a couple rocks up in the lakes of Pennsylvania and so on. And I mean, stuff happens, you know. Either way, long story short, new prop. You can get stainless. I think at this point I prefer not to get stainless only because... Aluminum is nice and soft, and if you whack a stainless prop, it's less likely to break, more likely to break internal engine components. I'd rather pop a whole blade off of a prop and keep the engine than ding a stainless blade and also cause damage to the engine. Maybe I'll go stainless in the future, but for right now, there's no need. The other thing is this. We asked a question earlier when we took this one apart. This is the hub. We did press the rubber piece out of it. This is what was called the Torque Flow 3. Tony over there explained to me the little bit of difference. The prop would walk back and forth on the shaft a little bit, and at idle it would make some noise. So what we wound up 
got what we have here is this brand new, but old, in other words, as old as the boat is, Torque Flow 2 hub kit for it. Now, for whatever reason, Quicksilver has written all over this box that I just took the prop out of for use with Torque Flow 2 hub kits. So that's what we're going to put in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the old Torque Flow 3 and put it in the original Mercury prop that's the 15 inch prop. I'll put that hub together in this. This will all be packaged together. This way, for if my son ever goes water skiing, we could use this prop. Don't have to mess with hub kits anymore. I'll have a hub kit in the prop. This one will be up what's on the boat. You could swap them out, whatever. Not a problem. I also have an extra nut. The old one I'll keep as extras if I ever need or break them. The extra brass nut and the locking tabs for it. I decided to go with Fox River Prop rather than another local store. In the end, I priced them. I called both places. And I got matching advice, but for some reason, Fox River Prop seemed to be a little bit more knowledgeable and a little bit, a little more customer service oriented. I, he was cheaper by a, by a little bit. I mean, 20, 30 bucks is 20, 30 bucks, right? But in the end, he was a little cheaper and very, and, and very knowledgeable from what I've heard from other customers that were there. Like you saw earlier, when we got there, he was out on launch or running errands or whatever. When he got back, very shortly after we walked in and I explained to him my situation, two other people showed up. So literally the guy takes like an hour lunch or whatever and people are beating down his door. That's got to mean something. Now I'm not dogging the other guy, which is why I'm not mentioning any names. But I like Tony over here at Fox River Prop. That's where I went to. The other guy might be just as good. Tony's a couple bucks cheaper and extremely knowledgeable. He even thinks he could redo my old OMC electric shift props that I have. So... We're looking into that. That's way in the future when I start working on that C-Ray. But for now, that's where I went. I'll put the information in his shop in the links below. Be sure to check him out. Tell him I sent you. So with that being said, let's go ahead and put this stuff on. So first we'll put the hub kit in. Obviously that's where the nut goes. And this is the side where this adapter goes in. So this goes down towards the, the back of the prop. This would be the front, be in front of the boat. Just push that in, and you see it's flush in there. And again, this goes on the boat, then that goes on, then your lock tab, then your nut torque to 55. Don't forget, you gotta put your thrust bearing in. First, the thrust bearing goes down, and the new prop. Put some never sees on here. Good enough. That's actually probably too much, but that's fine. Put your lock tab in, and then your big brass nut. I already preset the torque wrench to 55 pounds. Trusty little board. I'll bring it just a little bit to line up some of the tabs. Can shine down this way, Matt, so you see. Every clicks. I just want to go till the tabs line up somewhere. Good. Now the three tabs line up. Now to make sure the tabs don't, or the nut doesn't back off, just simply push the tabs that do line up, the three of them, down into that locking piece. So now, that's it. Hub is installed. Okay, so I don't know if you can hear this or not. I just got done torquing this prop and I spun it. And I don't know if you heard it, the camera picked up. I don't know if the camera picked it up or not. I heard it, and I wanted to call to verify something. I literally just got off the phone with Tony. Another plug for Tony. He'll take your call. He'll give you a quick answer to your question. Solves all my problems. So when I spun the prop, you should hear 
it makes a noise. And I'm like, wait a minute. What's grinding? What's binding? Why is this not working right? It spins pretty easy. It doesn't take really any effort to turn it. But listen, I'll shut up and spin. What is that and why? Here's the answer. They want this piece here to be really tight to the lower unit. They want the exhaust to come out the center, not along the sides, adding air bubbles. The blades cannot push against air like it does with water. So they don't want the air bubbles coming around the hub. They want it out the center of the hub. So when they make them, they're not exactly perfect. So when they spin, they make a little noise. That's brand new. If you look, here's the original one that came off. If you look closely, that's where eventually the paint got taken down from spinning. You can see just a little bit of marks all the way around from spinning this one when i spun it made no noise but how many hours did that sucker sit and spin so that was a concern of mine called answered verified we're golden now all we got to do today is thursday wait for sunday because that's when jen has off and uh we'll probably make another boating video the spare prop along with the nut and complete hub assembly and the thrust washer are all going to be going right in the boat. This is the bimini top cover. That just goes right there in the boat. Right there. Prop wrench. On the other side will go into the toolbox. Prop wrench will go into the toolbox. could have been a costly mistake it wasn't lesson learned for me hopefully now a lesson learned for you please like share and subscribe to the channel this is Festcheck speed and custom shop i am steve Festcheck. what else can i do for you Yeah.